Welcome to this audio descriptive introduction to Shakespeare's new place, the site of William and Anne Shakespeare's home. It is one of a number of Shakespeare heritage sites you can visit in Stratford-upon-Avon, cared for by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Introductions to Shakespeare's Birthplace and Hallscroft are also available online. The Trust holds the world's largest public collection related to Shakespeare, comprising books, archival documents and museum artefacts. These can be accessed through an online catalogue or by visiting the Reading Room, and collection highlights are on display within the historic houses. New Place stands on the corner of Chapel Street and Chapel Lane, across the road from Guild Chapel in the centre of Stratford-upon-Avon. It's a ten-minute walk from Shakespeare's birthplace on Henley Street. At the southeast end of Henley Street, there's a roundabout. The third exit on the right leads onto High Street, which becomes Chapel Street. New Place is about five minutes' walk down Chapel Street, crossing over one road on the left side. Blue Badge parking is available at the north end of Henley Street, where there is also a coach and bus station and a multi-storey car park. There is also Blue Badge on-street parking on Chapel Lane, and a further car park on nearby Church Street. The last building on this site at New Place was demolished in the 18th century. In its place is an extensive garden containing sculptures and plants. The house next door, which was once owned by William Shakespeare's granddaughter Elizabeth and her first husband Thomas Nash, is now an exhibition space. The façade is Tudor in style, though this is not original. It's a three-storey timber, white plaster and brick building. The rectangular windows comprise smaller rectangular panes. The two gabled roofs are triangular in shape and terracotta tiled. The stories are tiered, with the upper floors hanging proud of the floors below, supported by curved wooden beams. A central wooden door faces onto Chapel Street. This is where to buy tickets at the start of your visit and pick up large print guides. It is also where visitors exit from New Place. There is one step up to the door and a bell to request ramp access. New Place is wheelchair accessible throughout. Assistance dogs are welcome on all sites. Concessionary tickets are available, which include entrance to additional Shakespeare Birthplace Trust sites. For further information, visit the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust website at shakespeare.org.uk. Here you can also listen to audio descriptions of highlight objects from the collection. Some of these objects will be on display on site. The main entrance is to the right of the exit door and is always staffed. From here you enter the garden before continuing inside to the exhibition. The entrance is an oak and copper construction with a studded door in the centre. Above it hangs Shakespeare's coat of arms, a shield of yellow slashed by a silhouette of a ceremonial spear. Above the coat of arms is a lushly feathered cockerel in profile, sculpted from metal facing an identical spear. To either side, copper panels are inscribed with New Place, the site of Shakespeare's family home from 1597 to 1616, and a quote from The Tempest. And to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. This gate stands where the threshold to Shakespeare's home once was. The garden beyond is divided into three distinct areas. Firstly, a courtyard on the site where the house once stood, which contains sculptures and commemorative and multisensory features. Beyond the courtyard is a sunken knot garden, in which plants are arranged into complex patterns. 
The final section is the Great Garden, which has a large lawn, sculptures, and impressive flower beds and trees. Most of the sculptures throughout the garden can be touched. Through the entrance to the courtyard, staff and volunteers wearing name badges will be able to provide more information about the house that stood here and the existing gardens and sculptures. A red brick wall surrounds the garden at waist height, with thin iron railings above and hedges behind. The exhibition building is to the left, with several benches running along the front of it. Brass lines embedded within the courtyard indicate the ground plan of the house as it stood during Shakespeare's lifetime. The current entrance is on the footprint of the original gatehouse, which would have been large enough to allow a small cart through. The left side of the current courtyard was originally a courtyard. A service range lay on the right side, containing a brewery, pantry, cold storage, cookhouse and stable. Beyond lay the heart of the house where the Shakespeare's would have eaten and slept. The paved ground of the courtyard is also marked by bookmark-shaped plaques. There is one for each of Shakespeare's 154 sonnets containing the first two lines. The courtyard contains a central raised flower bed, about 2 metres wide and 10 metres long, which leads to the site of the main house. The bed contains a golden meadow. Ornamental grasses and yellow, red and white flowers, including tulips and alliums depending on the season. Tucked in the middle of the golden meadow is a sleek, modern brass well cover. There has been a well on this spot since at least the 15th century. Slender poles stand in the meadow, each about one and a half metres high, with shiny brass spheres on top the size of an orange. Sticking out of each sphere is the title of a Shakespeare play on a brightly coloured sign or pennant which sways in the wind. Around the meadow are several sculptures. There's a bronze cast of an open strongbox with representations of a scrolled deed for the house and bags of coins inside. It's a symbol of Shakespeare's wealth and status in Stratford-upon-Avon. His seal, which contains his initials, can be felt on the inside and the outer lid of the strongbox. Nearby, a shining silver-coloured globe about a metre in diameter represents the world as it was understood in Europe in 1600. The globe stands on a rectangular plinth at waist height. It's supported by a spike, which runs from the plinth right through the globe, piercing it where Stratford lies. Adjacent is a studded wooden table where talks by staff and volunteers begin every half hour. They offer a brief introduction to the site and the outdoor sculpture. A sculpture called the King's Ship is inspired by the Tempest. About a metre long, the stainless steel ship is of a 17th century style, with intricate rigs and a tied sail. It's at knee height, behind a metal cord. There's also a model of the universe as most saw it in the early 17th century, with the Earth at the centre and circles around it, marking orbits of the Sun and planets. It's above reach, on a narrow silver-coloured stand about four metres high. On the site where the main house once stood, there is now a circle of benched seating, surrounded by hornbeam trees, with an entrance on the left side. The meadow spills into the circle on the right side. In the centre is a sculpture, His Mind's Eye, by Jill Borelovitz. It's a slightly larger than life-sized hawthorn tree overshadowing a large sphere. Both tree and sphere are cast in bronze, but appear a deep brown colour. The hawthorn is ancient. Its trunk is bent from the force of the prevailing wind, and its clustered branches have few leaves. The sphere is roughly pitted on one side in a pattern inspired by white noise in space.
The other half is shinier, with a golden surface of smoother wrinkles, suggesting a softer side of nature. Beyond is the knot garden, in which paths crisscross, splitting it into four squares, with a brass rendering of Shakespeare's seal on the ground at the centre. Each square of the garden has a rose bush at the centre, with thyme, rosemary, lavender, and other fragrant plants surrounding it in knotted patterns, derived from original Tudor designs. A step free route runs around the perimeter of the knot garden. Finally, the Great Garden is about 50 metres wide and 60 metres long. The step-free pathway continues around the edge. During Shakespeare's lifetime, this space would have housed animals and vegetable beds. Now it has a large central lawn. The right side of the garden is lined with Victorian flower beds, containing topiary hedges and, when in season, many petalled dahlias and feathery goldenrods. There is an arbour where you can take a seat and listen to recorded extracts of Shakespeare's plays. On the left side of the garden, the path weaves by a small wooden hut with windows and seats inside. This is a designated quiet space and minimal sensory area. The hut is closed, but anyone can gain access by asking a member of staff. At intervals along the perimeter path are nine sculptures by Greg Wyatt created between 1999 and 2007, each representing a Shakespeare play. They are cast in bronze, but organic in shape, reminiscent of malleable clay or waves of water in motion. They're each less than a metre wide and some extend above head height. Partially formed figures and plaques with quotations in raised letters are embedded within them. You are welcome to touch the sculptures. The entrance to the indoor exhibition space is located between the knot garden and the courtyard. Inside the building is a combination of the historic house and a modern extension at the rear, with exposed brick floors and walls. To the right are toilets, including accessible toilets. A turn to the left leads to the ground floor exhibition space, which focuses on the history of the house since its construction in 1483. In the centre is an illuminated model of the house, with pull-out drawers around the base at shin height. They contain items from the collection of the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Further displays include an audiobook which plays nursery rhymes of the period when its pages are turned, and glass cases containing archaeological findings from the site. Outside this room there is a lift on the left and stairs to the right, which have handrails on both sides. Upstairs, an outdoor terrace overlooks the gardens and offers views of Stratford beyond. A second exhibition space focuses on Shakespeare's family. It contains animated films of imagined events in his life and models representing his family members with detailed costumes sculpted in paper. Replica items of clothing for trying on hang nearby. In a glass wall case, there's a contemporary copy of Shakespeare's will and a gold ring. This is thought to be his signet ring, as it features a seal of his initials. A full description of the ring is available to listen to in the online object recordings. The route continues through learning rooms to a staircase down, with a handrail on the left. Back downstairs, there is a gift shop leading to the Chapel Street exit. The Shakespeare Birthplace Trust website, shakespeare.org.uk, has a wealth of further resources, including information about access. You can also phone on 01789 204 016.